Now, Minnie, let's talk about your brilliant new book, Managing Expectations. Yeah. It is out May 3rd. It's not so much an autobiography, you call it a, a tell sum. Instead, instead of a tell all, it's a tell sum. How did you pick which stories to include in the book? Well, you know, when you're sort of wandering through your life with no particular direction, telling stories. I'm aware of it, yeah. I know, that's, yeah. Mm. Um, you realise, you know the stories that connect with people and in the same way that maybe when you're on stage, you can, you know when you're in the, the audience is in the right pocket. Mm. I've always seen the stories that people liked when I told them. So I started there and then it sort of became chronological, like stories from childhood, pre-fame, got famous, had a baby by myself and then my mother died and my mother is a huge figure all the way through the book. Um, so the stories are really... The stories are stories about how stuff not working out in your life is invariably other stuff working out. Yeah. Um, so it's not, and in 1997, I snogged Matt Damon. Mm. <laughs> it's not, even though I did, mm. it's not that. Mm. It isn't that. Don't, if you want that book, don't buy this book. But do buy this book if you want... Um, it's really, it's like... Stories about someone who's done that, but other stuff, and that's what she'd like <laughs> to talk about. You know, it's... Yeah. Um, I, I, think it, I think there is stuff that is relatable about how... There's no there, there in life. The idea of arrival, an arrival point, whether that's money, love, um, your work. It's a constant process, so... Well, you are a natural storyteller, right? I really can't wait to read this. When are we going to get the, the Marsden uh, I memoir? Just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just starting it now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you remember? I couldn't write four pages of a memoir from my life. Nor would I find, really? Nor would I think any of it is interesting, either. But when you were a kid, I mean, you've had such an amazing career. Did you imagine that your career would turn out how it has? No. So when, what, no. was, what was the turning point where you thought, oh, I can do this? It's still to come, I no. think. <laughs> no, 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 I think I'd hope that it ended up the way it has, but I don't think anybody prepares themselves for a guaranteed success or knows, like you even said, the definition of what that is. It's sort of a journey. And, but um, I was just a kid from Oklahoma who did impressions that I saw on Saturday Night Live and you know, made people laugh in school. And, like, I'm going to move to L.A. and be an actor and be a big movie star. And I think it was just young and naive and dumb enough to be confident enough to start booking work. But, I, I mean, I've been doing it for 29 years now, and it just feels like... You always feel like your, your last job is your last job, right? A hundred percent. Always. Right? But there's a great story in your book about how you got your first big break here in America, because you were working a lot in Britain. Yeah. What happened? Tell that story. It's a really good story. Well, I came, for, I came to New York for, like, a, a weekend, because I had a film coming out, and I came for a weekend, and I went to meet with this really big casting director who is, you know, she's a legend and she's amazing. And she didn't... She was being very nice, and I was sitting in her office, and suddenly, like, next door, the, these two guys start having the most massive row, like, proper screaming at each other, and she's ignoring it, and then she says, excuse me for one second, and she leaves, and I'm thinking this is just what happens in America. Like, everybody shouts all the time! <laughs> it's just crazy all the time! And I'm so happy sitting there going, this is America and I'm part of a massive row. <laughs> anyway, she comes back in and she's like, she's like, do you want to meet a couple of directors? And I was like, what now? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, the shouters next door. And she was like, yeah. And I was terrified and I was like, sure. So I went in and it was Stanley Tucci and Campbell Scott and they were about to direct this beautiful film called Big Night. Mm. And the actress that they'd hired had just dropped out and they were having a huge fight about, I think, everything. About <laughs> panicking about their film. Anyway, they talked to me and I don't know why they gave me the job. They gave me the job right there and that was... I'd really come for a weekend and then I didn't go home for probably two and a half years. Um, I just stayed. Yeah. Wow. Oh. That's a great story. That's why you write a memoir. Reggie? Stories are beautiful. Do you have a question for our guests this evening? I do. Tonight's question goes to... Uh, again, as usual, uh, this will be for the entire couch. <laughs> including the uh, person in a slightly different dimension who's sitting next to you. <laughs> uh, I will address the first question to the interdimensional being. <laughs> and now for you, uh, Zeppelins might make a, a comeback. 
Uh, are you interested in riding on a Zeppelin if it had enough amenities? Um, yeah, I'd ride, I'd, I'd, I'd ride a Zeppelin. James? Which one? <laughs> I'd have to see Minnie ride the Zeppelin first. Okay. This, uh, this sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely right. Please thank our wonderful guest, Minnie Driver, James Marsden. Don't go anywhere. Gail will be here.